Welcome back to the Butler Beat, I'm Bryn Erdy. We're sitting here in Starbucks where most students are on their laptops registering for classes. It's the first week of November, which is the kickstart of registration and the academic race to the finish line that we all seem to feel. But it's also the kickstart of No Shave November. So we caught up with some students about No Shave November, even those that don't participate in growing their beards, mustaches, and yes, even their leg hair. No Shave November is simple. Ditch the razor and, well, let your hair grow. But what is it for? Do you know why people don't shave? No. The start of winter to, like, stay warm? Um, I do not know the actual reason for it. Yeah, it started as a lot of jokes for some people, but uh, it's kind of turned into this cool cancer awareness campaign. The American Cancer Society sponsors the nonprofit organization No Shave November. Its mission is clear. Donate the money you'd spend on razors and waxing appointments to prevent cancer, save lives, fund research, educate, and aid those fighting the battle. It's incredible. I think it's something that's really, really cool. I know that I know I can grow a mean beard, so maybe I'll, I'll start now and I'll just continue it on four days after November. It's awesome. It's a great way to raise awareness. I think that this is a fun way to do it. Men get to grow out their facial hair and they don't care and you get to raise money while doing it. So, yeah, I think it's a good idea. I think it would be good if more people knew what it actually was for. Women on campus want to donate but are hesitant to participate. I will donate money to the cause elsewhere. I think people, women participate every year. <laughs> At least they do in my high school. Are you participating? Absolutely not. And for the men who can't seem to grow facial hair for one reason or another, there are other ways to raise awareness and donate. It's actually really funny. I just shaved this morning. I do the best I can. I'm not really one who ever gets much no, no shave November action. <laughs> I don't know how well it comes in, but you know, I, I give it, I give it my best effort. If I could grow facial hair, I definitely would to support it. I have a few friends doing it too, so it's a group effort. If you'd like to know more information about No Shave November, you can visit their website, noshave.org. There's a new organization here at Butler University taking on more than one public issue. Do Something is a national organization that doesn't focus on one certain philanthropy. Founders at Butler University, Maram Almartieri and Anissa Alonso, tell us the organization promotes a variety of issues. We're trying to raise awareness for social change, so we're just doing like really small campaigns that the national organization comes up with. Butler's new chapter of Do Something is staying rather busy. They've already had two events and are planning a Grandparents Gone Wired event for next week. So one of the first ones we did a couple weeks ago was birthday mail. We made birthday cards for kids in shelters. And then we're doing musical mix-up this week, and that's a, just a giant game of musical chairs, and it's supposed to raise awareness against bull bullying. And then we're going to do another one called Grandparents Gone Wired, where we're going to teach the elderly technology and get kids involved in different acts of service. There is a catch with this organization, though, but it's a good one. If you go to a Do Something event and post a picture on Twitter or Instagram of you participating, you get entered into a national drawing for a $10,000 scholarship. But new organizations aren't the only exciting thing on campus. A lot of professors have more interests than just teaching. For one professor, his interest is writing. Jason Lancer is the Honors Program Coordinator here at Butler University. He's in the process of promoting his new book in writing another. The first is about alcohol, the prohibition era to be exact. Lancer says it's interesting because people think it failed. When you say prohibition fails, you have to ask, what do you mean by failure? Because we don't expect any other law in our history to be followed 100% of the time. Um, but this is a law that was very popular, was put in the Constitution, and then became very unpopular and was repealed. So it becomes a very fascinating study of what Americans want or what they think they want. Um, and then what they know and what they think they know. The second book is about Disney. Lancer was inspired by his daughter's love for Disney, so he looked into the company further. So my focus right now is how Disney uses history, um, uses the past to construct, obviously, stories for us to, to watch, um, how it uses the past in its parks, um, but also how the past and, and having to influence having to be mindful of the past that they help create influences Disney um, as a company um, and also how Disney, especially in its parks, becomes a means for us to construct our own sort of memories and thus sort of our active participants in creating personal history if nothing else. 
Lancer is currently looking for a publisher for his new Disney book. As seasons change, temperatures continue to drop. The radar shows possible flurries on Friday, so don't forget your jackets before heading to class. Thank you for watching this week's Butler Beat. Follow us on The Connection or find us on YouTube at Butler Beat MDA. I'm your host, Bryn Erdy. Have a wonderful week, my fellow Bulldogs.